Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Wow. What a day. What a week. History made in North Texas. Actually, it was kind of made in the desert, <laughs> but we're bringing it back to North Texas. John Radigan here, Nate Newton there. Yes, we talk cowboys, but right now, Nate, I think you and me need to tell these people that we have got to let me tell you something. <laughs> John, you tried to set it up, but I think you're so excited about these raises. John was trying I, to say, let us tell you something or let me tell you something. Hey, John, I'm excited too, man. Uh, the Rangers did wrong. what they need. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it, man. We we work for Niagara, baby. We flushing it down. We already go. <laughs> we already passed it, baby. Niagara Plumbing, thank you for this uh, sponsorship. But, man, I got my boy Raz. He excited. I mean, when have you ever known an announcer to be so excited that he can't even get it get it out his out his, out his words man but go ahead on john tell us about these ranges what a great great accomplishment 63 years nate basically this franchise was born in the same year that you and i were wow 1961 For right? real? are you kidding me <laughs> that's how far back it goes yes we were all born the same year yes you've won three championships since then yes sir I haven't really won any, but at least I was around for your three. <laughs> you rolled I was with me, John. You rolled with me, baby. Huh? You rolled with me. We did what well, we had one out in Arizona, so we we beat both these championships, right. both in Arizona, baby. Oh yeah, how about that? Yeah. That's the last Cowboys championship was out there in the Valley of the Sun too, not far from where the Rangers won theirs. So yes. uh, amazing, man! It was so much fun to watch. It was so much fun to be a part of. I got to do some of the post game work on Valley oh, Sports. Oh, you did? So, uh, yeah, man, I'm back there now, and I'm doing NBA, but I got to do some of the post game on on Valley. So, man, it was just a great, great ride for the Rangers, and it's just you know when you when I'm good friends with Eric Nadell. Okay. Nate, you know, who does the Rangers games on radio and has since 1979, right. back when we were still in high school. Oh, yes, and, yes, um, yes. And, yeah, and, and Eric, uh, you know, Eric called the end of that game perfectly. When you see someone, I haven't talked to him yet, but someone like him to appreciate this, man, it's a long rush of futility and all I'm seeing on the social media posts this morning, Nate, are all the different people. Who, who this means so much to them because they used to watch their Ranger games with their parents or some, maybe their grandparents, someone who's no longer with us. They know how much it means to those people who have waited so long to see this day. And and here it is. Uh, the World Series champions reside in North Texas. Oh, man, I, I'm just happy for all you fans. And like I tell people, I'm not, you know, I can't I can't fake, you know, I, I'm not a hanger on and I don't get on the bandwagon because I probably would be that dude that would bust the axle. But I promise you like this <laughs> right here. I'm happy for you, Ranger fans we got up this morning i told my wife i said the rangers won i think five zip you know uh they they took it but i was reading up on it and i was like, yeah I just want to just touch on it managers like ted williams martin i mean the, we had a president as an owner uh ivan uh pudge we just think of all the great personalities the great people who who've been a part of this thing but never ever took it over the top. And so when when you look at uh, the manager, Bochy, you look at Chris Young, and I'm, the statements he made in spring training, why did y'all go out and spend this money? We're tired of losing. It, 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 do you know what that means, man? 
Oh, yeah, man. This franchise lost so much, it drove the great Ted Williams out of the game, mm. right? He was just like, oh, my God, we lost 100 games? I got to quit this. He, <laughs> he managed them right. in Washington. He managed them the first year here. Tom Grieve tells me that story. Another good friend of mine, 55 years with yeah. the organization, and he is now, you know, celebrating the fact that there's a world championship. Tom tells me, you know, Ted Williams used to say, man, just go hit. <laughs> And, and Ted Williams is the greatest hitter of all right, time. Right. And Tom's like, Tom, uh, Ted, we're not you. Right. We can't hit like that. <laughs> but that's all he wanted to do would just go hit. He didn't want to work on fielding. Right. He didn't want to work on, you know, pitchers fielding practice and all the drills. Wow. He just wanted to go hit. Right. And that's what the Rangers did last night. Not for six innings, Nate. Not for six. Yeah, so. That cat threw a no hitter through six innings. Yes. I was thinking, oh, here we go. We're going back home. It's, you know, a no hitter through six. And here came Corey Seager with a little, and I love this when you beat the shift because I hate the shift and you can't really shift anymore, but they still do mm -hmm. to extent, whatever extent they can. You got to have, you know, certain rules uh, adhered to, but they shifted over, got away from third base. Corey Seager never hits it down the third baseline. What did he do to get that first hit? <laughs> Reached out, end of the bat, little squibber, down the third baseline. He will do what it takes to win. Nate, that's what MVPs do. Yes, sir. He's only the second position player ever to win two MVPs wow. of the World Series. Him, him, and Mr. October, yeah. Reggie Jackson, the only wow. two position players. And then you got Bob Gibson, the great pitcher of the Cardinals, and Sandy Koufax, uh, the great pitcher of the Dodgers. They're the only four wow. that have ever won two MVPs in two different World Tell Series. Tell me this before we go. We got this guy locked down for a few years, right, Mr. Seager? We got him locked down. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. We, we got him locked down I'm going to have to pay him yep. after this year. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, yeah. He might want to renegotiate yeah, now. Wow. He's amazing, man. He's he's like a robot, Nate, all season long. I don't know that I've ever seen a player like him in, in any sport that is just so focused. You should see the routine that he goes through every day where he sets up a little camera like what we've got right. right here and he ties it back to wherever his hitting coach is and every day he goes in the hallways behind the, the clubhouse, not in the batting cages, anywhere like that. He goes through his same routine. And man, his first year, we're all, all of us, especially those of us, we see it a lot on the road. Mm. Those of us with travel with the team, we're kind of looking at him like, what is with this dude, man? He What does he do every day? 162 games a year. He is out there on the camera yeah. talking to his guy, you know, doing the same routine. And, man, does it pay off for this guy because when you need him the most. How about that home run he hit wow. when the Rangers are down in game one yeah. to tie right. that thing up in the ninth inning? Come on. Hey, let, let me say this right here. When you are a great player – uh, you mentioned it that last time we was together, Troy Aikman. The routine yep. never changed. If it's a winning routine, is it a routine that keeps you focused, corrects you, and gets you back in line? Why Why do you get away from that routine? And and, and I'm quite sure when y'all was looking at that guy, You probably, I'm, I'm glad I wasn't a part of the team because they probably got rid of me because I'd have been joking and clowning all day about it. <laughs> but... Walk us through that, man. Walk us, walk us through those first hitless six innings, man. What, what did we have chances with guys on base, with guys in position to score, or did these guys just shut them out altogether? So, first of all. I could see you, Nate, like photo bombing him, <laughs> yeah. right? When he's back there, he's talking to his dude. Nate's behind him. Hey! <laughs> you know, but you probably would have swung a bat on me, huh? <laughs> I, I could see that. Corey Seager, all he'd do since you're a teammate, he'd just give you a dirty look. He'd be like, the hell are you doing? But, um, yes, so no, there was no base runner until the fourth inning. Wow. That's when um, when that gum, uh, look, uh, low, uh, Nathaniel Lowe, your name, say, yeah. Nate Lowe, he got a uh, he got a walk. So this dude was perfect for four. And the only pitcher that's ever done a perfect game in the World Series was Don Larson right, right. back in 1956. Right. This dude took his no hitter longer than anybody ever has mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in uh, an elimination wow. game. Right? It's happened in the World Series before, not in an elimination game. It was a clutch 
pitching performance. He was nails. He was unbelievable. He was so hard to hit. He was in control of everything. He had that curveball. And he'd set you up, you know, yeah. outside fastball, outside fat, drop that curve in on you. The curveball <laughs> right, would right. just be devastating. Right. That was his strikeout pitch. And uh, he didn't have that pitch the last time he faced the Rangers in, in game one. Man, he had it yesterday. And he was devastating. He was extremely hard to hit, which is another credit to the Rangers. Because, you know, there, there, there's a part of you mentally, I think, Nate, and you've never played series like right, this right. As, a, as an NFL player. So you'll, it's always win or take all right. once you get to the playoffs. But, you know, there could be a part of a team in that case. Whoa, damn, this is this dude's night. Okay, <laughs> okay well, yeah. we'll have to win it in game six. Right, you know, right. that's cool. We'll win it in front of our fans at home, right? I think human nature could take over and let you say that. And and all credit to these Rangers and all credit to Bruce Bochy, they weren't going to go there. They right. needed, they knew we got a chance to win this thing tonight. We've got to win it tonight. Right. And, and really as a fan, I'm sitting there going, man, this isn't bad. This is pretty cool to see this kind of pitching duel and, and, you know, wonder uh, which pitcher is going to win. Cause they hadn't scored either. Obviously they never did, right. but, uh, but, you're like, this is a cool game, man. And if there's a no hitter and, you know, we have to come back and win it in game six, that's cool. But, um, uh, you know, you have to win it when you have the opportunity to do so. And all credit to Nathan Avaldi, who did not have his best stuff and and still battled through. He had nine at bats where he faced the, the Arizona Diamondbacks with runners in scoring position. None of them were able to capitalize wow. on those at bats wow. in, in a in a crucial game like that. So man, he did his job and then some. And and uh, I saw my buddy Dave Raymond, who's the TV guy with me on Bally on on uh, play by play. Right. He said, "I'm not." This is when the no hitter is still going on, and he's like. I'm not sure whose pitching performance is more impressive because Nathan Navaldi was just, he's that bulldog, man. He came through every time the Rangers needed him most. Wow. I, I just, I'm so happy for the Rangers fans and I'm so happy. It, 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 you, you're excited. I mean, uh, you about yeah, to give up your admit. Detroit connection and all of, all of that. I mean, yeah. like, are you finna just come straight to Texas and from now on cheer everything Texas? Are you going to still have your alliances outside of the state. Well, you know what's funny? We'll go back to 2011 when the Rangers played the uh, Tigers right. in the American League Championship right. Series. And I was with the team on the road. I remember uh, I actually handed the ball uh, to the, I think it was. I think it was the grand slam ball right. that uh, Nelly Cruz hit to win like game four. I right. think it was right. back here. And um, I somehow end up with it. I end up giving him the gun ball on TV and so forth, you know, so, and people are like, my family, especially are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. you're telling us you're not rooting for the Tigers. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I know like, you know, Nelly in that case, right. Michael Young, right. Ian Kinsler, right. Derek Collins, I'm still by all these guys. I know them. I know their wives. Right. I know their kids. Yes. I know everybody in this organization. These are friends of mine. And yes, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for my friends. I basically don't know anybody on this Tigers for team. Real. So, um, it changes it, right, in that regard. Now, I'm going to say this now. I've never told you this. Right. I'm going to say this. Um, <laughs> when you guys lost to the Lions yeah. in 90, early 92, right, I right. think it, yes, was, it was, right? Uh uh, I I was on that trip too, and uh, I don't think I've ever told anybody from the Cowboys organization this. But I woke up that morning. We we're in the team hotel. I woke up that morning. I'm like, hmm, man. Who do I want to win? Right, right. And I'd only been, and at that point, I'm only two years removed from Michigan. Yes, right? Yes. At that, and so, who do I want to win? Oh, I want the Lions to win, right? That was me that morning, right? right? And then and then they did. And I was the only happy SOB on that plane That's going, right. oh man, Jimmy Johnson fighting. You know, I was happy. I couldn't I couldn't show it, not right. in front of Jimmy, right. especially, but I'm drinking my little beer. There. I'm like, yeah, the Lions, the Lions are going to the NFC championship game. But I've flipped on that. Oh, okay, too, right? okay. You know, once I once I got to know all you guys better, once you know, I got to take that ride with you right. through three, you know, championships and all that. You know, if the Cowboys are playing the Lions today, right. um, and you it, just hey, neutral. it could be a 
It could be a battle right. in December, Nate. It's going it could to be, be a December battle. 30th, I think it is. They're 6 and 2. Cowboys right now are 5 and 2. That one could be a big big game. So, uh, yeah, I'll be a little more neutral. I will say this, ever since Dan Campbell got there, baby Nate, baby uh, baby Bill Cowher. That's what oh, I call man, it. Oh, man, I love yeah, old Dan yeah. Campbell. And, you know, you, I, you were gone, I think, by the time he played for the Cowboys. Right. But uh, he was he was just – and I did uh, one of my radio shows I did with Dan. I, I love Dan, so I'm rooting for him big time. But, yeah, that'll be a tough one. I'll have to reassess how I feel on okay. that December 30th wow. game. I think I'll be going Cowboys. But, so. I, but I do know this, man. Uh, the Ranger fans be happy. Traffic will be flowing pretty easy. Everybody will let you in when it's time to exit yeah. or let you out or whatever. So at least the day will be nice. You know, the parade is when? Friday. Yeah. I'm not sure of the route, yes. but it's uh, Friday. It's tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they, they, uh, do they have more allegiance to Arlington, which they should? So this parade should go yeah. through Arlington because this ain't got nothing to do with Dallas. I hate to say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know it. And I th I think it will. I think it'll go through Arlington and uh and you know, I don't know exactly what the route will be, but right. obviously, you know, it's going to I'm sure end up at at Globe Life Field right. and and not unlike, you know, yours did. You got to at some point um get the team back to a place where they can kind of address the crowd. Right. You know, since Texas stadium was so far from Dallas on your parades, right. you know, you guys had to go to the convention center right. or whatever. But like, I remember uh, covering the stars parade and the Ma and the Mavericks in 2011 and both of them stars ended up at reunion arena. Right. Mavericks ended up at American Airlines Center. That's when we got that great video of Dirk Nowitzki up right. there with a cigar in his mouth singing, We are the champions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> man, I just, uh, it just sometimes you have to do whatever it takes, man. And uh, yeah. Chris Young and the ownership and, yeah. you know, and, and one thing, I, I'm going to say it again. I mean, the fans never wavered, man. They groaned no. a little bit. They wondered a little bit, but they continue to come to the stadium. And now, what are they talking about? Three million next year, maybe? Fans just yeah. over flooding this place, man, and giving them their just do. And, and just, man, I, I, you know, like me and my wife are just laughing because I'm like, we just happy for the fans because we like, well, I don't really know the Rangers players. I'm finna get on this deal with, with Rad and Rad going to be excited. I, I'm going to be excited because Rad excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you that about three million too. And, and I want to get back to Chris Young and Ray Davis, right. but, uh, Three million at this new ballpark is significant because, right. you know, 38,000 is a sellout here. We'd gotten three million a few times after the 2010 and 2011 runs to right. the World Series. Right. You know, the Rangers had a couple of seasons there, uh, you know, in the early teens where they drew three million fans. Right. Not as significant when you got a 50,000 seat ballpark or 48, right. whatever it right. was. This is 10,000 fans per night less right. if you sell out. That's right. And they will likely, they'll likely, especially being champions. And because it's also so comfortable in there, man, it's such a great place to After watch. After burning up for 35 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is a credit uh, also to Ray Davis right. and, and the voters and the fans, too. But, you know, Ray Davis put a lot of money up for that, put so much money up for this uh, this vision that um, Chris Young ultimately executed. Right. Yes. And I I give Chris Young so much credit for the execution of this vision. Also, I give him a ton of credit for one of the first people he mentioned when he was on national TV accepting that trophy last night was basically his mentor and friend, John Daniels, right. who helped construct this vision, right? right. And, and certain things happen. We know that. People get fired. Sports is a business. Yes. But I thought it was really big of Chris Young to, to mention the fact that John Daniels had a significant role in what we watched in Arizona last night. And I'm, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy, man. You know, you know, you you always wish a guy could be there, man. But you yeah. know, and I I used to be one of them guys. Well, don't even mention his name if you know if you. But you know what? Some people deserve mentioning, and it just to not to be forgotten in certain instances, yeah. man. And uh, 
Uh, I hope they send him a ring or something or send him something, you know, just saying, hey, man, thank you for your services. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the gold watch is good. I don't care what people say. You work 50 years. You get, all I got was a gold watch. Hey, that's more than what most people get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But, man, no, I'm, I'm it's just. It's true. You, uh, just think, when did this truly start? What year did this rebuild, this re-changing uh, of the mind, this transformation, when did this really start? What year, Rad? Really, it began, uh, unbelievably, sometime, no doubt, in the middle of that 100 lost season just two years ago right. in 2021, right. right? So the Rangers lose 102 in 2021. They were embarrassed. They were just, it was the first year that, um, you know, fans could actually come to Globe Life Field right. and nobody wanted to. I mean, a few, you know, a yeah. lot more than, more than would have did because they'd never seen the ballpark. Right. But, that you know, the product on the field was not what they were there for. Right. And ownership was embarrassed embarrassed by that and the general manager was embarrassed by that and his new assistant Chris Young was embarrassed by that and they said we've got to we've got some really good young players in the organization right now we have got to um, support them and and what you usually do in baseball Nate in that case is you wait until the Josh Youngs of the world the Evan Carters of the world you know these guys that we've seen come up and do so well usually you wait for those guys to get to the big league, league level and then you support them with free agents right. and what John Daniels part of the plan was I'll never forget this when they spent 500 million dollars Basically, on Nathan, of I mean, on uh, the first year, they spent the money on Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, and John Gray, right? And so a half a billion dollars they spent. And I remember John Daniels saying, normally, you wait until your young core is there and then support it with free agents. He said, but we saw this free agent class was so good, we decided to do it in reverse. We're going to bring the free agents in, and then our young core comes up and they support these free agents. And that's exactly what happened. That's where the vision began, right? right. And then they still turned around and lost 94 games last year with half a billion dollars spent. Right. And to be honest with you, you know what? That might be right why Ray Davis just got so mad. He's like, we spent half a billion dollars. What's our GM doing telling me that? Right. We lost nine, we 94 lose lose. Oh, forget it. We're gonna get, we're gonna change this whole thing. Right. And then and look, they'd have tried to do the exact same thing they did this past offseason, getting DeGrom, getting Evaldi, getting Heaney, getting all that pitching. Uh, they would have tried to do that exact same thing if John Daniels was still here. Yeah. And, and the main key to that is Ray Davis. So, you know, Chris Young executes the plan. Ray Davis and Neil Liebman write the checks. And boom, you end up with their first World Series championship. Wow. That, that that is magnificent, man. Uh, that that right yeah, there, so man. Much fun. And see, and I, and when you see, and that's why fans. You know, I don't talk about this a lot, but that's why fans are mad when anything about a trade deadline or anything about free agency pop up, and you tell your fans we're close. And then when these periods, because a lot of times these periods pass for the Rangers. In 19, 18, 19, uh, up into 20. These, you know, now it's with the Cowboys. These times keep passing. And fans are like, wow, look at Philadelphia. They just improved themselves. Look at the 49ers. They just, you know, and that's why fans are upset. But everybody has a game plan. And if you buy in at the beginning of the year, you got to stay in. You know, uh, you can't just, you know, take all your chips out because they're on the table. So my hat's off to the Rangers, man. And uh, they bought in. They stayed in. But more importantly, I want you to talk about Mr. Bochy, the manager. How did he swing this, man? He's unbelievable. He really is. I mean, you know, I knew, I thought he'd be great, right? right. Mark McLemore, my partner on Rangers Live for all these years, told me uh, when when they got Boach, yeah. he said, this is the unbelievable, great, greatest move 
best manager they've ever had, all this stuff. And I said, why? And he said, because he is so calm. Now, Mac never played for him. Right, right. But he, he, he watched him, right? He said, right. this dude is so calm in the dugout. He just, he knows what's going on. You know, every time he makes a move, you're like, what the heck? He brings in Aroldis Chapman in front of Josh Spores last night. You know, it had gone Spores, Chapman, and then LeClerc, right? That was the 7th, right. 8th, ninth. Here comes Aroldis Chapman. I'm like, wow, what's he doing here? And I, is he just bypassing Spores? No. Then he brings Spores in and ends up Josh gets the final, I think, seven outs because um, LeClerc was still a little uh, sore, right. not in pain, but sore right. from the night before, right? I mean, these are all decisions he makes, and and he executes them to perfection. He's like five steps ahead of almost everybody else in the stadium, and that gives players confidence, yes, man. Yes. They know Mac knew. Mac was like, you know why? He goes, he's he's going to be sitting in the dugout, and he'll go, you're next. You're after him. And the dudes are like, what? What are you even talking about? And then that'll happen, right? Because he sees the way the game is going to unfold. And um, he's fun. He's funny. He, he's a great storyteller. Um, man, he is the total package as a manager. And, um, you know, I believe this is just the beginning of what could be a pretty long stretch of success. Can you win it every year? I don't know. But this Ranger team is poised for some some long-term success. Oh, man, that's just great to hear, man. I just, I, I'm excited for you. Like I say, uh, wow. I mean... Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate they, it, brother. I'm I'm excited for all these fans that yeah. have waited all these years and all these players who have worked so hard. And, you know, and I, I don't I don't blame them uh, for not bringing the moment down last night. But I wanted someone to uh, ask um, Nathaniel about yeah. his mama. His mama's you know can't be there. Yeah. Wendy Low, God bless her. She's battling brain cancer. Right. And and. I wanted him to have the opportunity to give her a shout out right. on TV, right. but I know it's a tough thing to bring up as an announcer right. when you're standing there with him, but you know, he, he, he would have, he would have loved yeah. it. He would have loved to say to his mom, you know, how much he loves her and, and how happy he is that she's gotten to see this. Right. So anyway, man, you know, there's, there's those stories within that clubhouse, wow. um, you know, that I just, just love and, and have loved telling over all these years. I'd say like this here, uh, it, it'll never, it'll never be forgotten. And y these guys have friendships, man, you know, Forever. I mean, especially being the first to ever do something for an organization to be yeah. a part of it, yeah. no matter how small, how big. And, uh, you know, I know people don't want to hear this, but the the jobs that were spent from this, you know, I mean, for everyone. I, I remember we when we won our first Super Bowl and I look back at all of the guys that are on national TV. I'm not, I'm talking about only players. Right. I'm talking about local guys as yourself who worked with the Cowboys who are, who did things for it, for and outside of the Cowboys. I still see these guys to this day on national yeah. TV uh, just because yeah. of those championships. And you'll see these same guys, if they keep their mind right and stay professional, you'll see a lot of these guys that's playing baseball, on TV, doing things, saying, hey, I remember we back in such and such, 2023, we did this at the World Series. And, uh, uh, and you'll be like, wow, you know, I didn't know he could talk. Well, I didn't know Troy could do this. Troy was so yeah. quiet. I didn't know he was going to be one of the top announ you know. Yeah. Yeah. Deion yeah. Sanders, what? He's, man, he's got, yeah. got, got Colorado. Yeah, can you see us now? I mean, Mike Irvin, you know, NFL, uh, you know. Woody used to be on the S. I'm not. I, you look around and you just see the success that winning breeds, man. The success yeah. and, and all of this will come to the Rangers, but you have to stay focused, right? And and yeah. and, and and people say they enjoy the championship. Coach Johnson told us you won't be able to enjoy this championship to months, months, or maybe years later, when when it is so far away. That's when you look back and say, wow, look what we did. 
I was, you know, Mr. Seeger probably never say it out loud, but one day, man, he'll be sitting on a can back there in Niagara, sitting on a can, getting rid of a few. <laughs> and he'll look up and say, man, not once, but twice I was the MVP. Yeah. And he may not, yeah. he may leave out of the can and not say a word to nobody, but in his mind, he'll say, wow, not once. But twice, only the second position player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just yeah. tell people, yeah. you know, I, I'm not a bragger. I don't, I don't do that. But sometimes, man, I stop and think when I see Troy on TV. I see Mike, you know, go Moose. past, and I yeah. say, "Wow, I played with that dude. He's a Hall of Famer." Yeah. You know? And uh, when uh, yeah. do, along those lines, Nate, do you remember? I mean, because your stretch was four years. Yeah. Was there any point during the four-year run of success that you were able to appreciate the first one, or did you have to get through them all before you began to appreciate? You know who our coach was, right? Yeah. yeah he wasn't going to let us celebrate. <laughs> no. I mean, now we no. Ce- you know us, right? We celebrated after the game, and we of paraded course. after the game, but it wasn't two months, and it was like <laughs> – what what are you gonna do this year? I mean, what are we gonna do? <laughs> wow, Jimmy! What have you done for me can lately? I celebrate yeah. this? Hey, you need to lose some weight. I'm like, come on, coach! I'm just trying to just had an extra bottle of champagne, bro. <laughs> so, but I'm telling you, you it, it, even though guys are periodically say, "Wow, we're we're the world champions," if you want to repeat, you'll keep the feeling in your heart, and you'll work just a five percent harder coming into the year because you have went what a month longer than anybody else. So your body has wear and tear on it that no one else got. So you, especially the pitchers, they got to get somewhere and sit down. They got to sit down, man. They got, they got to actually put their arm up, put, put, you know, put whatever the heating they got and just rest that bullpen the other night. They're going to have to rest. They were stretched yeah. a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were stretched. So yeah. he, they got to get somewhere and rest. Now, you know, the guys who swinging the bat and running around, I mean, they all, oh, come on, man. But them guys who've been pitching, they're going to have to get somewhere yeah. and rest, get themselves a month. Yeah, the, you know. yeah, those hitters, those hitters would go at it tomorrow yeah. if they could. Yeah. But, yeah, but but you're right. And, and it, it's such a long season. You know, I, until people do it, until I did the whole 162, man, where you play 162 yes. games in, an, in 180 days, man, it is a grind. And those guys, I've, I've never, one time I was close, but I've never done the entire spring training. But they're at spring training mid-February. Yes. And look at here. We're at the, you know, almost, we're in November. And these dudes don't right? load management. They don't load yeah. management. They load by playing. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why Marcus the NBA. Simeon played every game. That's why the NBA Marcus has Simeon a lot of injuries. That's why yeah. the NBA has a lot of injuries because, yeah. number one, they don't prepare in training camp. And that's what's wrong with the NFL. Yep. That's why we so soft as the NFL because we don't yeah. prepare in training camp. And then when the season starts. You, you you know, do still get off days in the middle of a, a you know, but anyway, Rangers, yeah. Yeah, way to go, man. Yeah. Way to go, yeah, Rangers. That's awesome. All right, real quick, how much time we got? Let's talk a little bit about the uh, this Eagles game now. Uh, uh, this, is, this is bigger, Nate, than we thought it was going to be just in that, you know, they've only lost one, but the Eagles have come back to the pack a little bit. The Cowboys, you know, had that big win over the Rams. So, you know, this game, man, we, we knew it would mean a lot. But if they were still undefeated, you know, the Cowboys would basically be two and a half games behind them. They're not undefeated. Cowboys win. And, you know, both teams are sitting there with the same record. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that uh, I, I'm trying to tell everybody is. And I will continue to say this all year as we do these shows, right? It's all going to come down to Dak and our defense. And if Dak can just play instinctual like he has the last two games, you know, like I tell people, it's, it's a difference between running and it's a difference in pocket presence, the ability to scramble to get rid of the ball or to scramble to prepare to run the ball. This team, the Eagles, only gives up 65 yards a game, 65.5 yards wow. a game. 
yeah. 3.9 yards a carry. They are not yeah. playing. We did not try to throw the ball last week. I mean, excuse me, we did not try to run the ball. Run Even the ball. after the yeah. three sacks within the four plays, you notice we didn't come back and try to run the ball. We we continued no. to throw the ball because we thought that their secondary was vulnerable. This secondary here is vulnerable, but the difference is you have a better defense. Number 99, Aaron Donald is the best in the business at what he does, yep. but they have four hogs up front that can dominate a game. Uh, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, uh, Fletcher Cox, Hassan Reddick. They got sweat over there. They got guys that can dominate a game. We got uh, Barnett coming off the bench. was a first-round pick out of Tennessee a couple of years ago. You got Brandon Graham that's still on the team. So they can come at you in waves. The Cowboys will have to try to run the ball. And, I, and I, as long as you don't have negative plays, one yard gain, two yard gain. You have to continue to try to knock up in there because you don't want to turn these guys loose. Pass rush wise, they are like us. They can eat a team up if you let them. If you if you if you play from behind, they have the ability to eat you up like the Cowboys does. So it it is about Dak being able to move around, bootlegs, uh, rollouts. Uh, uh, all the all the run pass options should be in, in effect, uh, and, and not not for Dak to run necessarily to take off and run unless necessary, and because our offensive line has not been healthy. Now we have Tyron Smith. Uh, I tell people like this right here. I'm, I'm about the business of football right about now. You take your feelings and you set them somewhere else. Tyron either got to get on the pot or get off. Because this week, we may have him this week, we may have him that week. He off yeah. this day, he or not on. We need to get some continuity. So you either put uh, Austin Richards, the backup, the third team backup, or you put uh, the other kid, Chamur, uh Eagle, Do Eagle Daga. You either put him in mm. or you put the, the Austin Richards and you let him work. Because this back and forth is not good as an offensive line. You know, get get stable because what we're getting ready to play a run of teams that have great defenses, good to great defenses, starting with this Eagle team. You know, Rad, you've been wrapped up in baseball. But this, I get to feel like everybody's trying to downplay this game. I understand you have nine more games left or ten more games, left, but everybody's trying to downplay this game don't downplay this game don't let what happened against the 49ers take the fire from you you know uh and i'm not it's just how i'm feeling in the media nobody wants to ask this question like how big is this game this game is big this game is big for us positioning yourself in the nfc east this game is big for positioning yourself in the NFC itself because now if you win, now, like you said, you become even with that team. You have a shot at the home field all the way through. But if you lose to, now you fall back to the 49ers who have already beaten you. Now you're in third place. Now you're playing every game on the road. Now people say, well, it's too early. No, it's not. Not with Detroit pushing themselves to the forefront. You can't do that. If it was just y'all three, okay, jockey. But Detroit is not playing. Dan Campbell, baby Bill Cowher, is not playing. He has got his guys playing at a physical high level. People are like, oh, they got blowed out a couple of weeks ago. They don't care. Dan Campbell no. don't care. He's a knockout puncher. He'll get up off the turf. He'll be like, George Foreman, you rope a dope me, Muhammad Ali. I'm getting up and I'm going to come back and beat folks when I'm 80 years old. He don't care. So the Detroit <laughs> Lions don't. You know, they got a different mindset than the Cowboys, right? I am being serious. Yeah. I am being serious. Yeah. And just thank God that we came back after that loss against the 49ers at one, two. That just shows you the resiliency mm -hmm. that we got that Coach McCarthy has, that Dan Quinn mm -hmm. has, that that coaching staff has. Now, it's a four-team race, and each one of these teams are fighting for that that off week. And only one in each division, each conference, get this off. So that is what the Cowboys should be looking at because 
I try to tell people that I do shows with, I don't know why people don't understand. You can talk Super Bowl all you want. But I remember just four weeks ago, six weeks ago, when the Rangers didn't win, get home field advantage, how everybody just went into the dumps. Ugh. Yeah. Because you you take steps. You take it is rare when you have what the Rangers did. That is rare. It is rare what Cincinnati Bengals did like five, four years, three years ago. It's rare when you just pick yourself up off the ground and run to run to the uh, World Series or run to the Super Bowl. That's that's rare. So when you have that rare occurrence, don't think that's the norm. Things used to go back to the norm where you take steps. Everybody hollering Super Bowl, you got to win the first, second round. You ain't won the second round in I don't know how many years. But you're in position now. If you don't take advantage of this one game, now you're two, two and a half down. Yeah. Now you're you're looking, okay, you don't want to keep your eye on them, but now you're forced to keep your eye on them. You got to keep your eye on – if the if the Eagles beat us, now you got to – you know, the coaches may say, no, nah, we'll concentrate. You know, you got to keep your eye on them. And you got to look at their schedule. And now it gives us more in the Metroplex to talk about, hey, look, they're two down and this is the schedule of the Eagles. When you win this game, we don't have to worry about the schedule of the Eagles. They got to right. worry about us. Now we can talk yeah. about our next opponent. And, and you know, and, and it ain't a little memo over to the side. Yeah, you won three straight, three straight but the Eagles haven't lost any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we got yeah. we need this yeah. game is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you a question, Nate, that that has occurred to me in part because of not using the run game last week. And, and I, this this may be overreacting to that. But like last offseason, I I you know, again, I, it's easy for me to spend right. somebody else's money, Jerry Jones money right. or whoever. Right. Uh but I didn't want to see Zeke leave this organization because I felt like, you know, he and Tony Pollard as a tandem, right, relieved each other just enough that Zeke could, you know, he had, he had already transitioned into being a different kind of back. He was that bruiser, man, that guy that would get you the short yardage and so forth. And Tony could be that, you know, quick scat back, get out and do anything he wanted. And I was afraid if they got rid of him, because it ain't my money. I know right. it would have cost a lot of money on the cap and all that, but it's not my money. I was afraid that what we're seeing right now would happen, which is, and tell me if I'm wrong, that maybe Tony Pollard, it's just really, it's a different animal to be the only guy to be the featured back and to not have that guy there to relieve you as Zeke was to relieve Tony. That's one of the reasons he had such a great year last year. Am I, see, am I seeing that right or wrong? I, mean, I, I, I was sitting on shows for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm like, everybody, this is the problem I have with this here is everybody is always talking about, Oh, you don't want to disrespect Zeke. You don't want to do I, I, I looked in the cameras like I'm looking now. I said, you know what? If I'm Jerry, Mr. Jones, a Steven, Mr. Jones, I'm like, Zeke, we love you. We paid you. We need you. And here's $3 million. Here's $2 million. And here's a bunch of bonuses. Don't leave this team. Yeah. Don't go out there and find out that everybody sees you the same way we see you. That's what he did. He went to New England and they saw him the same way we saw him. But everybody always, I don't get it. I don't get it. Now, I understand if you was raised up, your mom and dad are millionaires and you, you know, you got just 300 million, $3 million to throw around. You, you talking about something where a kid comes from nothing to making $10 million a year. You asking him now to drop down to $3 million and that's disrespect. No, that's age yeah. of the game. And so yeah. I would, I would have told Zeke, man, I would have chained him up down in the attic somewhere in the bottom. Bro, you stand with us and see, yeah. it, it, that is what bothers me is everybody keeps talking about disrespect. I'm like, these fans, you don't want to disrespect Zeke. Well, okay, you went and played for New England. They disrespect you. Come on back home with yeah. Daddy so Daddy can take care of you. You know what? Yeah. That, what we love you here in Dallas. And so, it, it, bro, spend their money. Don't don't worry about spending. They, they smart. Uh, Chris Young didn't care about spending some money. He's been a bit of half no, a billion dollars. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. No. We messed yeah, that up. Yeah, that's right. And so – 
Yeah, and I, I appreciate that you agree with me on yes. that because I just wonder if the run game, especially now, now we're in the tough half. Right? We're we're in the tough half of Rico this we got this kid, Rico Donald. Right. And that's the other thing. That's at least see what we got there. Yes. You know? Yes. Get the ball to Rico Donald, man. And let and let Tony be who it is. See, this is what I tell people. When you got something and it is special, and it is special the way it is, why are you finna change? Yeah. When you have a special player and he is special in what he does, and all of a sudden, hey man, we're gonna we we're gonna just change who you are. Why would you do that? And you gave him ten yeah. million dollars to change him and not to enhance him. I, I don't like that move. I I, I try to no. tell him from beginning of training camp, you know, spring training as you baseball players. People say it. I try to tell them in spring training, let this kid Rico Dotto run the ball. And then, uh, you know, Tony, you know, start Tony one series, then bring in Rico Dotto two series, bang him up in there, then bring Tony in for a change up. Some people are closers, man. Don't change who they are. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the other thing. This Texas Coast offense, it occurs to me, is so much more dynamic if you've got that constant run threat. Yes. Right. Yes. But you gotta have that threat, and right now it doesn't appear that they. Uh, it doesn't even appear that they're trying to use it as a threat, <laughs> much less is yeah. it a threat. They're gonna have to do it this week, and like I say, as long as you don't have people like, well, what, what if you're gaining one or two yards? It's making the defensive line pay attention. As long as you don't have them hits in the backfield, you know, as long as you get that one, two, maybe three yards, because I promise you, it's better to be second and seven than second and 15. You drop back and they sack that because all you want to do is pass the ball. Now you got third and 20 because now you now, now your offensive line has jumped off sides or holding somebody. Run that ball. Don't have any negative plays. If you run that ball this for 30, 30 times or 25 times and you don't get but 99 yards or 100 yards, as long as they got positive yards, one yard, you can keep them at bay, and now you can you can attack the secondary. All right. I'm losing my voice. I'm screaming too much. Okay, all right. You're I'm too excited, man. <laughs> we'll do it again next week. It's been so much fun, Nate. I think you make great points about the Cowboys. Talk a lot more football next week. And we'll get into the Mavericks. Something. We got to start watching those yeah. Mavericks. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, Nia.